MSU on Broadway and beyond, up next on Carpe Diem. Hello and welcome to Carpe Diem. I'm Amanda Eustis. From performing arts students to starring on and off Broadway and all around the world, today's Carpe Diem highlights Montclair State University performers who are making a name in the theater world. We hit the streets of New York to catch up with two MSU stars, Rob McClure, who will be starring in the upcoming Beetlejuice the Musical on Broadway, and Wanu Ugun Fuora, starring in off Broadway's We Are the Tigers. Let's take a look. My Broadway debut was in 2002 um, in a show called I'm Not Rappaport. Uh, played the Booth Theater right there. <laughs> so fun to like walk through here and be like, that was I'm Not Rappaport, that was Avenue Q, that was it's like all these like legendary houses, you know, that you get to be a part of. One of the benefits of Montclair is your proximity to this. I mean, if you want to go into theater, this is, this is it. So being a quick New Jersey Transit ride away was a huge asset. The way that the Montclair State University Musical Theater Program helped to benefit where I'm at and how I continued to grow as a performer was that there was a lot of eager professors and performers dedicated to helping us as students grow. The best part about being at Montclair State University is just having that proximity to the city and being able to go in and out and be at arm's length of the hub center of where theater is. It's also nice to have working faculty who were also working on shows and projects that were outside of the school who could kind of bring in that real life experience. I remember in high school waiting hours to try and get a discount ticket to see something right here. There are so many times in my career that I look back, I don't want to be the best person in the room. I want to walk in and go, oh God, I've got to keep up with all these people because at the end of that, I'm going to be better. Going into any room, going, what can I learn, <laughs> uh, is, what's, uh, is what got me there. <laughs> How I ended up in Beetlejuice was uh, I was a big fan of Alex Timbers, the director, and I was really lucky that this role came just from an offer. They said, hey, we would like you to play this part, but that was not always the case. I feel so lucky being able to say, I got an offer. That's not how it normally goes. Normally, it's a grind. Going into the business, you need to be available all day, all, all hours, just to you know be seen, to be ready. Sometimes you'll have callbacks that last for an entire day. It can be drawn out into a month or months, and just making time for that was a little bit difficult, but it was manageable while at Montclair and having so many like ways of getting in and out of the city made it like not terrible. I, I feel like a lot of the hectic uh, lifestyle of running to an audition, running to a part-time job, trying to pay your tuition bill, trying to pay for your books while you're auditioning. That's just conditioning you for this business. Figuring out how to multitask is part of this gig. Uh, back then, I was commuting, parking at the bottom of the hill by the Yogi Berra Museum in this freezing cold and trying to run up the hill for a 7 a.m. class. Uh, it gets you ready for getting in line for these equity auditions in the cold in the morning. So much of learning how to audition is going in and failing. Does it get difficult in this business, auditioning and you know spending all these long hours and maybe not seeing the fruits of your labor? Of course it is. It, it, it can be really tough and it can get discouraging at some times, but what really kept my focus encouraged me to continue on. And there's just like a time for everything. There's a time and a season for everything and knowing some things are for you and some things are not for you. And just knowing that like you need to be prepared all the time so that when your luck meets your preparedness, it, it'll all mesh together. So I just always try to tell others, especially like younger classmates to just like focus on you, um, utilize, especially at Montclair State University, everything that the school has to offer. I look back and I go, you know, that was the right school for me. You think you need to be this hungry sort of like puppy dog, and really you just need to be nice and really good. Those are the two things you can be in control of. The rest is up to fate. So you combine the program with the attitude you're bringing to the program, and it's about getting better. I definitely uh, didn't always consider myself an actor. I definitely, definitely did not consider myself a dancer. There were people 
in my class and they had years of technical training. Going to Montclair was my first time ever taking like a ballet class and thankfully I had great teachers that pushed me and helped me. It was awesome to have that and like come into the city and like these dance calls are like no joke and you kind of just have to pick up and know it. And I've been able to do multiple shows where I've had to do a lot of moving and I've held up against some performers who I think are amazing. So I'm like, I'm proud of that. You can be great at everything or you can get better. You can continue to grow. If you're there already, try your hardest. Just like do what you can, try your hardest, get through it and then take that experience and learn from it and figure out how to do it better the next time. And it wasn't until I started figuring out who I was and what I had to offer this world um, and the world of performing uh, that I started to work. So getting out of the sort of uh, how do I become the next so-and-so and getting into how do I become the first me? How am I gonna bring something to the room that they have not seen yet? Uh, and that's the key to unlocking that door of pounding the pavement of auditions. They, they respond to uh, singularity. And if you're trying to emulate someone else, you're just getting lost in the gray cloud that everyone else is trying to emulate. As you can see, Montclair State's theater department plays a major role in these actors' lives. And joining me now in studio to share their own experiences are Adriana Negron, who just came off a tour of A Chorus Line in Shanghai, and Phil Sloves, who recently made his Broadway debut in SpongeBob SquarePants the Musical. Also joining us is one of MSU's theater and dance associate professors, Mark Hardy, to talk about how the department helps shape its stars into the roles they play today on the big stage. Welcome, everyone. Thank you. So I would like to start with you. Okay. Now, would you be able to explain to me how currently, as you just came off a tour in Shanghai, mm -hmm. what has Montclair State given you and what is the benefit of being here and being able to take on such larger roles? Well, I would say that my audition for the Shanghai tour, um, I was really prepared for that audition because of Mark's class. We have a class called Audition Technique. And before coming to school, I don't think that I had that technique in my like bag of tricks. I think that when I auditioned, I was scared and shy and I learned how to trust myself and be confident in who I am from going to school here. And when I walked into that room, I felt prepared um, enough to audition and pour my heart and soul into the callback material and perform for people every night. And um, I thought about Mark and the class when I got the part and I said to myself, I wouldn't have gotten this if I didn't take that class or I didn't, you know, practice and prepare myself for this audition. And I am grateful for the school because of that. Now, what is uh, professors, the professor's class about? What does it teach? So, um, we have like a few mock auditions and we walk mm -hmm. into the room and um, we kind of just help each other out, us and our classmates and, um, oh, you, we say things like, oh, you look uh, uncomfortable or you looked nervous, try doing this, try saying your name a little bit more confidently, um, things like that, finding good audition material, songs that match your type, things like that. Wow, I would have never have thought that that would play such a big <laughs> role into it. Now, Phil, what about you? How has MSU now benefited you in the roles you play today? Oh, well, uh, coming into school, I was a very raw talent, I should say. Uh, I didn't really have any training, and uh, I was on the wait list here, actually, and I was hoping to get in here, and I got the email that I got in, and um, basically coming here was more of a acceptance for me, like, hey, maybe you can do this. Maybe there is a future in this for you. So I didn't take it lightly. I worked very hard. Um, Mark's class in particular was very helpful, the audition class, and also we did scene study class together. Um, but yeah, altogether, uh, the training at Montclair is why I am a professional actor today. I credit all my things to being here. And Professor Hardy, it seems like the theater department here plays a major role in where the students have come from and now where they're going in the future. Can you tell me a little bit about the program that Montclair Sure, offers? sure. <clears throat> I have to say, first of all, I think one of the great strengths is the students we find. We wouldn't be able to do the work we do without their dedication and talent. And I think we've sussed out over the years the best way to kind of get through to the heart of that talent, whether it's raw talent or highly trained already. Um, so it's a, it's a very even 
three-pronged program, acting, music, and dance, which is essential in the discipline. And typically a student will come in with one or two strong areas and one noticeably weak area, so we really load them up on that area. Um, and then we, throughout their time, shamelessly exploit our professional contacts across the river and bring in guest artists, guest directors, guest choreographers, and conductors so that they're already getting professional working etiquette from the source as well as from us and then building a network and a resume with these mm -hmm. people before they graduate. And I think the other thing is that the faculty is all composed of working professionals. We all have Broadway histories, touring histories, off-Broadway histories. Most of us continue, or all of us continue to still work professionally. So we're keeping up. The program is always right. flexing because the business is changing mm -hmm. every year. So we're really adapting it, adding new courses every year to help address those changing demands. Now, what's your background, whether it be in or on or off-Broadway, I Well, say. I started the way <laughs> they did. I had an acting degree and a lot of musical training and some dance training. Moved to New York and started working in musical theater. Mm -hmm. So I made my career that way. Got to do a lot of those big things they're dreaming of, Broadway, national tours off-Broadway. I did a ton of symphony concert work for a long time. And then in my late 30s, got bit by the teaching bug and uh, never looked back. Mm -hmm. And it was a, an incredible pivot for me in my life. I have the best job in the whole world because I get to work <laughs> with people like these two um, every day. So in terms of the curriculum here, a lot of it's more hands-on, more performing rather than a book, correct? Right, well it's, it's surprisingly balanced because I think in all of our classes, they're, you know, they write a lot for me hmm. because, and I say to them, you may not like this work, but you have to be able to communicate to a director mm -hmm. if you want to get your way, if you want to be part of that process and have a seat at that creative table, sure. you have to be able to express yourself. So they take theater history, they take quite a few um, intellectual classes that require a lot of reading and writing, but it's a heavy duty practice program. It's really a conservatory embedded in a liberal arts program. So they take the lowest number of gen eds of any major on campus mm -hmm. so that they can focus in the studio on the other three wow. areas. Very nice. You don't get to do all the other liberal arts education we all say, right? They do <laughs> <their> mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so Phil, let's, let's talk about you. Yeah. Your career, you said when you first got that acceptance letter to come to Montclair State, uh, you felt like there was a need for you, like you could do this. Yeah. Now seeing yourself a couple of years later fulfilling these very major roles, how does that make you feel? Um, it's, it's humbling because, I mean, the work never stops. Mm -hmm. So I'm still nowhere near where I mm -hmm. dream to be. But it's like you hit one milestone, you're like, great, we did it. Now we have this to get to, and then we have the next thing to get mm -hmm. to. So it's, it's always a forward momentum, but it's always nice to sit back and think, wow, I never thought this was attainable, and now I've attained it, and I'm thinking about the next step. Mm -hmm. And it, it's it's exciting. It's always it's always something new. Always climbing the ladder, exactly. right? Exactly. <laughs> now, going into all of these productions that you've previously done, like you never thought you've done, what made you choose musical theater as a career choice or a career path? Yeah. Um. So when I was like a kid, I mm -hmm. used to watch this show called The Marvelous Musical Mansion on VHS. <laughs> I was like three and a half years old, and I'd be dancing in the living room. My mom and grandma would be like, "Oh, he's a performer," and um. I mean, I grew up doing sports and Taekwondo. Mm -hmm. I did Taekwondo for mo like most of my childhood. Mm -hmm. And then um, we moved to a different town and there was a St. Anne's Stages, a, a summer theater program. So we, I enrolled in that and found that I liked it. <laughs> and some people from there did the Paper Mill Playhouse Summer Conservatory. Okay. So I auditioned for that. And uh, my first two years I didn't get in. And then the next year I auditioned, I got in. And opening night of our first concert there, I like went backstage after the open numbers crying. I was overwhelmed with like this, wow, I found my thing. Wow. It was, yeah, I think back to that moment a lot. It was, we were singing applause mm -hmm. and the applause overwhelmed me. And I was <laughs> on stage with my hands in the air in the paper mill pose as they call mm -hmm. it. And just, it was euphoria, yeah. That's a big step too, the paper mill playhouse, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I, yeah, between Paper Mill and Montclair, I have a lot of uh, gratitude for both of those. <laughs> Adriana, why did you choose this career path? Was there something or somebody that said to you, hey, you're pretty good at this, you should look <laughs> into it? <laughs> well, um, my mother was a pretty big influence um, in my choice to go into the arts. Mm -hmm. She was actually a dancer in the city professionally. 
So she put me into musical theater when I was really young, and I had my start at the Pocono Playhouse, which is by my house. <laughs> um, and I've just been performing since I was six years old, and I knew from my first main stage performance that this is what I wanted to pursue as a career. So I never stopped and I worked really hard and I still work really hard um, to keep growing. And I know that this is my passion and it's where I feel most like myself. So that's why I do it. Now, Professor Hardy, seeing your students jump into these larger roles, currently still in school and now graduation um, is around the corner for her and somebody who's previously graduated a lot of your students. Mm. Um, what joy do you specifically get out of it, previously teaching? It, it sounds really corny, <clears throat> but it's, I would much rather at this point see them up there and see them succeeding and growing than doing it myself because I've already done it. And there's something almost parental about working with a student for a, a few years and then seeing them absolutely come into their own and blossom and leap. Um, it's incredibly gratifying. It's really the most exciting process in my artistic life um, to date. Who knows what, <laughs> what may be next, but I don't think it's going to get better. And you previously taught both of them, correct? I did. Yeah, Phil and I worked together for two years, both in studio um, class and in uh, production, and Adriana, we have four years together, yeah. Adriana, <laughs> and two productions. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so quite a bit. Any memories that you can remember or? Well, moment. in this audition class, which you keep talking about, which is very gratifying, I'm glad it, I'm glad it works. Um, Phil, um, Phil was a great object lesson for everyone because he just, well, you see who he is, right? And as Rob was saying in the, in the interview, um, you have to come in as you. That's all they can work with, and, and the specificity and singularity, as he called it, is what gets you work. Phil had that in spades. He could walk in and fall down. <laughs> or lose his lyrics, or go up, which means to forget <laughs> everything, um, and still be fantastic and appealing, right? Because mm -hmm. he was so um, comfortable with who he is. Uh, so I remember that, and the class just hated him because I would always stop and say, <laughs> do you see Do you see how this still works, and you still want to call mm -hmm. him back? Because he's sharing who he is with us. Mm -hmm. And I think one of my favorite memories of Adriana is working on West Side Story together particularly in the uh, Dream Ballet, because I had a, we brought in a really wonderful artist to set the original choreography. Mm -hmm. And I had a couple of ideas about how I might like to tweak it to kind of update some themes in the show. And the way she threw herself at those <laughs> changes was a marker for me that she would absolutely be successful. Because in this business, it's, um, it's a lot like the military in many ways. <laughs> You're looking for people who will throw themselves at the problem. Mm -hmm. And she's that person in the room who if I said, I want you to jump off the roof, mm -hmm. she would say, from which floor? <laughs> <laughs> she wouldn't think of why she couldn't. She would say, okay, yes, now how do you want me to do that? And those are the people who work, who are always ready, who are always full of ideas and full of eagerness, and who don't present problems but present sure. interesting solutions. Now, when you see students that are passionate, that might not have all the skills, like you said, in, your to in that toolbox that you need, how do you lead them and guide them in the way to make sure that when they do graduate or while they're still currently enrolled in school, that they can get roles, that they can keep pushing right. forward, that they might not be the best they are now, but eventually they can yeah. get there? It's a strange cocktail of realism and nurture. So we as a program, and I think it's one reason our students are doing so well, and they're doing remarkably well. Mm -hmm. We're getting letters from casting directors and wow. people in New York saying, what are you doing out there? Mm -hmm. When your students walk in the room, mm -hmm. we see a difference. We're really <laughs> excited always to see them. But we are a more nurturing program. Many um, musical theater programs are built on a more sort of cutthroat. We're going to uh, deconstruct you and rebuild you in our image kind of mentality. We're not that. We're looking for individuals, and we want to preserve and celebrate their individuality. But I think we're also pretty rigorous, and we let them know if there are flaws or problems, they have to be addressed now because the business will not be forgiving. If you go in and sing off pitch or you're unprepared or uh, you come in with some hint of unprofessionalism, you're going to be written off. And for many casting directors, that's forever. You go in the no pile, and they're not going to have an open mind about you. And those casting directors are the route for them to get in front of directors and conductors and choreographers. Mm -hmm. So we, we really take them through all the brass tacks of the sure. business so they understand all of that. 
Sure. Now, what opportunities, either Adriana or Phil, you can either answer. We could start with you if you'd like. What opportunities and doors have opened now coming to Montclair State? And um, well, my resume was uh, really built off of everything that I did here. So when I went into the city for my chorus line audition, they saw my resume, they saw who I worked with, and threw out some of the names. And um, they were all from Montclair, all of the <laughs> guest directors from Montclair. So I know that having those names on my resume have kind of like helped me get further. And now, um, now I've made my own connections and I have different auditions because people know me and I, you know, I'm in the city now and it's, it's all networking. Mm -hmm. And I think that we get a really good start from this program. Absolutely. Yeah. And if I can jump in yeah. quickly, um, a lot of programs forbid students from auditioning for outside projects while they're still in school, in school. for all four years or sometimes for the first two to three years. Okay. We have the opposite policy. We mm -hmm. want them out there doing it so they can come back and reflect with us mm -hmm. on those experiences. We ask that they don't audition for work that will take them out of classes, but summer work work over the winter break, break. like mm -hmm. Adriana just had, because we want them understanding what they're getting ready for. Mm -hmm. well, you did a lot of auditioning late in your I did a lot of auditioning, yes. Time. I actually did not get a professional job, though, until um, I was in rehearsal for 42nd Street, my last show here. Okay. And um, I got my first offer for the Matt Caden Summer Theater, which Mark knows very well, as do I. Is that an opportunity that you got through the school, or is that you um, took your resume Well, yourself? the school allowed me to go into the city and audition okay. during school time. Mm -hmm. I didn't have class schedule necessarily, but I was allowed to go into the city audition. And through that availability, I was able to get my first professional job. And we actually now bring companies here mm -hmm. to audition our students. Um, really? So we really try to um, create opportunities, opportunities even absolutely. on campus where they can audition for mm. professional work. We have a whole group of companies who come every year now we have our own summer stock collective where summer companies come to us. Yeah. Now, Phil, let's talk about your experience on uh, Broadway, right? With oh, yeah. SpongeBob SquarePants. Yeah. So you were the understudy. You said for two roles. Yeah. Right. I Tell was, me about that. Uh, I was a swing and uh, an understudy for Mr. Krabs and Patrick. Very cool. I joined the company um, on July second, mm -hmm. and um, I was there until we closed on September sixteenth. Mm -hmm. um, I got to perform. Mr. Krabs a total of seven times and wow. I got on for Patrick once. Very so cool. yeah, it was very exciting. I, my Broadway debut was uh, August 1st, I'll never forget it. Oof. And yeah. Nerves were day, racing, right? It was just so much everything, like a culmination of a life of work and mm -hmm. just waiting to know, because I found out the morning of that I was going to be in the show, that I was making my Broadway debut as a principal role of Broadway that day. So it was just like an overwhelming experience. Yeah, it was so overwhelming. <laughs> now, Adriana, you recently, over winter break, mm -hmm. were on a tour for the chorus line. What is the audition process like going in to a room where you're auditioning for, I'm, I'm going to assume maybe three or four people, and you basically have to sell yourself? Oh, yeah. So um, I went to an open call, and there were hundreds of people there, um, non-equity people. So basically anybody who wanted to be in the show could come from off the street and audition. Mm -hmm. So I was one of hundreds of girls and I was in the second dance call and I guess um, they saw something that they liked so they called me back and asked me to sing and then from there I um, got a call back and then another call back and then I was in final callbacks. Um, and I got to audition for Byork Lee and she's very well known in the industry. She was in the original cast of A Chorus Line. Mm -hmm. um, so she uh, was the director and choreographer for the production. And um, I got an email saying that they wanted me to play Deanna Morales in the China premiere, which is amazing because it was the first time it was ever in China. So I got to originate that role over there. Um, and that's the process. And then I just, I left. Um, I was there for two weeks. My whole life changed. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a different part of the world and now I'm back and I'm finishing my degree. Adriana's being shy. That, um, <laughs> the dance call for Chorus Line, and especially the way Bayork runs it, yeah. and her high, the highest of mm -hmm. standards, is, is sort of the most notorious dance audition among the most <laughs> in musical theater history and continues to be. And the fact that very quickly Adriana advanced, because those cuts are vicious. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, 
they might take groups of 20 and not keep a single person from that group wow. because they're looking for something so specific mm -hmm. and such a high level of dance technique, which frankly Adriana came in with. She'd been dancing <laughs> since she was a small yeah. child. But that, I mean, you're, you're really being shy there because that's <laughs> a huge thing to even get through those cuts and then to win the singing audition mm -hmm. for a role that is the most vocal role in the show and sings the two big songs is pretty thrilling. So there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Adriana, what can we expect next? What is after graduation? Do we have anything lined up? Um, Are there dreams, hopes? Well, I haven't signed any contracts yet, okay. so um, I can't say my plans. <laughs> but I plan to work during the summer and then move to the city or pretty close to the city and keep auditioning and hopefully booking jobs. She's being shy again. She has <laughs> offers, but because she hasn't signed, she's not sure. telling you what they are. Yes. Oh, sorry. We'll keep it confidential. <laughs> yes. We have another current student, um, Abby Matsusaka, who's a senior who is fielding like 10 offers at one time right now. Oh my goodness. Must be hard. I know. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's an actor's dream to have that problem. <laughs> and yeah. Phil, what about you? Um, what's, what's the next step? After serving and all the fun stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, you gotta, you gotta keep the hustle going, of exactly. course. Exactly. So, serving. Uh, but, uh, yeah, same thing. I mean, there's no dry ink right now on any papers, so uh, I'm uh, keeping my lips sealed for now, but there's some, there's some cool things coming up. You can see how suspicious we are as a tribe, right? You never talk about it until nope. you've signed until that you contract. Signed it. Mm -hmm. yep, yeah, because you never know. Same in our business. Yeah. <laughs> and any advice you can offer to other students out there that maybe want to go into the musical theater department but are not sure if they're going to be a right yeah. fit or if they're comfortable? Yeah, I would say you have to sharpen that skill set. The competition is greater and greater every year. So you've got to work on those weak areas. Uh, lead with your strengths, obviously. Mm -hmm. And then prepare, prepare, prepare. I think most people flounder because they, they rehearsed a few times and it seemed okay. As I've told you in classes, it's got to be perfect 30 times mm -hmm. before you take it in front of a room in an audition because your body almost has to be able to do it without you because you're going to sure. be nervous mm -hmm. and there are going to be unexpected circumstances. Oh, absolutely. Right? So I think it's, it's just hard work, perseverance, and preparedness. Sure. Like all, right? Yeah. Yeah. Best of luck with everything to you too, and thank you for joining me. If you would like more information about this or any other edition of Carpe Diem, you can write to us at the email address on your screen, carpediem at mail.montclair.edu, or call us at 973-655-5158. For Carpe Diem, I'm Amanda Eustace. Thanks for watching.